Good evening. This meeting is called to order. Welcome to the City Council Municipal Authority uh, meeting August 18th, 2020 at 7 p.m. We're in the Council Chamber, Centennial Building, 12 South 5th Street in Yukon. All right, we will start with our invocation with Pastor Scott Kenny from Trinity Baptist Church, followed by our flag salute. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to gather here as a free people in a wonderful state and an amazing county and just a, a, a great, great city. Thank you that uh, for the freedom we have. Lord, watch over the freedom. May we always be uh, have that opportunity to uh, uh, come and gather and, uh, and uh, practice self-governance. Lord, we thank you for this uh, council. We thank you for the, the, the men and the women who are coming and uh, giving their time as service to our community. Lord, we thank you for uh, our first responders who are watching over and keeping us safe during this time of pandemic. And we pray, God, that you would continue to watch over our city. Keep us um, from a, a, a very severe outbreak of, of COVID, Lord. Um, and those in our community who are sick, Lord, we pray that you would uh, make them well soon. We thank you for our... our our administrators and our teachers are part of our school systems. Lord, that's, uh, they're going to get back to school soon. They're preparing. So, Father, we pray for a, a great start of school. And so, Lord, as we continue to go through uh, life, watch over every family represented here. Lord, I pray there are blessings on them, and I pray that you would maybe draw us all closer to yourself. And We've been a long time, and we thank you for Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us. So, Lord, we dedicate this time to you tonight, and we thank you again for the opportunity to be here. And we pray this now in the wonderful name of Jesus, who is our hope. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Roll call. Selby. Here. Wooten. Here. Yonda. Here. Caccini. Here. Gilliland. Here. All right. Are there any presentations or proclamations? None this evening, Madam Mayor. Do we have any visitors? I have no request. Do we have any visitors? Yes. Pastor Kenny. Yes. Thank you again for the opportunity to be here. I always enjoy being here because I know every one of you up here <laughs> first lane so that's a blessing for me but I just want to share with you uh, something that we've just embarked on uh, at our church and it's uh, it's for the whole county we're, we're starting a thing called the together we journey and if you wouldn't mind could I maybe just pass this little brochure out to let you see what we're doing this is thank you Thanks, sir. thank you I'll take one anyway thank you And this is a dream that we've had to continue to minister to our, our uh, communities and, uh, and to our county. You know, we've had Faith Clinic now. We're into our fifth year. We're still the only free medical clinic that, uh, that I know of in our county. And, and we've, we see about four to 5,000 patient visits, or uh, we give that many prescriptions per year. We see around 650 to 700 patient visits a year. And so uh, we just feel like we're going to add to that. We're going to build a, a, a building, and we're starting fundraising. And, but that's not the reason I passed this out. I wanted you to show you the vision. And that we're going to add a, a food pantry to it, a clothing closet. And then in, to come, we want to have a free counseling center, or maybe a barber shop, a place where we could do minor mechanic work for free, and um, maybe a dental clinic. And just uh, we just have a big vision to minister to people in need, in uh, mm -hmm. not just Yukon. And not just Mustang, but our whole county. And uh, I know we have a lot of great services right now, but we're not in competition. We're just going to add to. And so uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And again, as you all are my friends and want to uh, maybe just uh, maybe excited about what, to let you know what uh, we're going to be doing. So thank you. Anyway. Thank you very much. We appreciate thank you. That. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. We will recess as Yukon City Council and reconvene as the Yukon Municipal Authority. 1A, YMA consent docket. This item is placed on the agenda to the Yukon Municipal Authority by unanimous consent and designate those routine items they wish to be approved by one motion. If an item does not meet with the approval of all authority members, that item will be heard in regular order. The city manager recommends a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting 
August 4, 2020, and payment of materials claims in the amount of $728,062. Do I have a motion? Motion accept. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Yonda? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Selby? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. We'll now adjourn as YMA and reconvene as Yukon City Council. Consent docket. This item is placed on the agenda so the City Council, by unanimous consent, can designate those routine items they wish to be approved by one motion. If an item does not meet with the approval of all Council members, that item will be heard in regular order. The City Manager recommends a motion that will approve the minutes of the regular meeting of August 4, 2020, B, payment of material claims in the amount of $1,094,307.26, C, designating the items on the attached list from the technology department as surplus and authorizing their sale, donation, or trade. And D, setting the date for the next regular council meeting for September 1st, 2020, 7 p.m. in the council chambers of the Centennial Building, 12 South 5th Street. Do I have a motion? Motion accept. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Wooten? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Selby? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Okay. Reporter boards, report of boards, commissions, or city officials. No report seen, Madam Mayor. All right. Item number three, consider approving ordinance 1408, an ordinance which provides amendment to the code of ordinance city of Yukon by amending section 204-91 and 204-92 and adopting the international plumbing code to, uh, 2015 addition and providing additions, insertions, and deletions thereto and declaring an emergency. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All right, seeing none, let's vote. Selby? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Caccini? Yes. All right, item 3A, consider approving the emergency clause of ordinance number 1408. Motion accept. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Yonda? Yes. Selby? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Item number four. Consider approving Ordinance 1409, an ordinance which provides amendment to the Code of Ordinances of the City of Yukon, Oklahoma, by amending Sections 204-106. 204-107 and 204-111 of the Code of Ordinances as the City of Yukon by adopting the International Mechanical Code 2015 edition and providing additions, insertions, and deletions thereto and declaring an emergency. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? We were all given these codes in advance and so we've read them just for those that weren't here at our last meeting. Right? Let's vote. Caccini? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Selby? Yes. Item 4A, consider approving the emergency clause of ordinance number 1409. Do I have a motion? Motion accept. Second. Any discussion? We vote, please. Caccini? Yes. Selby? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Item number five, consider approving ordinance 1410, an ordinance which provides amendment to the codes of ordinance of the city of Yukon, Oklahoma, by amending section 204-51, 204-52 of the code of ordinances of the city of Yukon by adopting the International Fuel Gas Code 2015 edition and providing additions, insertions, and deletions thereto and declaring an emergency. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Seeing none. Wooten? Yes. Selby? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Item 5A, consider approving the emergency clause of ordinance number 1410. Do I have a motion? Motion to accept. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote, please. Yonda? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Selby? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Caccini? Yes. All right, item number six, sit back and relax. 
Consider approving Ordinance 1411, an ordinance which provides an amendment to the Code of Ordinances of the City of Yukon, Oklahoma, by amending Sections 38-19, 38-20, 38-21, 38-41, by adopting the 2015 International Fire Code by amending Sections 101.1, 105.1.1, .1, 105.1.2, one oh nine point four one eleven point four definitions three oh eight point one point six point three five oh eight point one point three nine oh three point two point seven nine oh three point two point nine s dash one nine oh seven point two point three ten ten point one point ten ten fifteen point six ten fifteen point six one 1515 10.6.2, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.15.6.3, 10.
thereto and modifying design criteria and declaring an emergency. Do I have a motion, please? Motion accept. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Selby? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Wooten? Yes. 8A, consider approving the emergency clause of ordinance number 1413. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? May we vote, please? Yonda? Yes. Selby? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Item number nine. Consider approving Ordinance 1414, an ordinance which provides amendment to the Code of Ordinances of the City of Yukon, Oklahoma, by amending Sections 204-136, 204-137, 204-138, and 204-140, by adopting the International Residential Code 2015 edition for one- and two-family dwellings, providing additions, insertions, and deletions thereto, and declaring an emergency. Do I have a motion? Motion accept. Second. Any discussion? May we vote, please? Gilliland? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Selby? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Okay. 9A, consider approving emergency clause of ordinance number 1414. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Wooten? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Selby? Yes. Item number 10, consider approving Ordinance 1415, an ordinance which provides amendment to the Code of Ordinances of the City of Yukon, Oklahoma, by amending the Communication Tower Ordinance Number 1364, Section 60-70B, Location Requirements and Declaring an Emergency. Do I have a motion? Motion accept. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, may we vote, please? Caccini? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Selby? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Wooten? Yes. 10A, consider approving the emergency clause of ordinance number 1415. Do I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote, please. Yonda? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Selby? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Item 11, consider approving the fiscal year 2019 assistance to the firefighters grant in the amount of 232,000 with a city match of 23,200 from the Department of Homeland Security for firefighter breathing apparatus, cylinders, and face mask as recommended by the fire chief. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I, I had a question. Well, this, um, when we had opportunity to visit with you earlier in the year, mm -hmm. um, you gave us kind of some numbers on which apparatus need to be replaced. Are you meeting what you need with this? Yeah, this is actually just for our self-contained breathing apparatus as far as, you know, what we use for when we go in and fight fires and stuff. This doesn't have anything to do with, like, our trucks, that right. type of apparatus. Right. So. Yes, we're, we're very happy to get this grant. Um, our SCBAs are going to be 15 years old next year. We got them in 2006. Okay. And they're not going to be able to meet the NFPA requirements anymore. So we were really dependent on this grant. So you've got, I mean, at least at the moment, that replaces what needs to be replaced. Yes. Yes, this and, will. And doesn't yep. leave it short on any of that. <laughs> okay. All righty. So you, you feel that your, your guys have everything that they need? Yeah, I think we got a committee together, and we're going to be bringing in three different vendors and trying to choose, you know, what best fits our guys to serve the citizens of Yukon and what's 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 the safest out there. So, yeah, I feel pretty pretty confident we're going to be able to get what we need. Very good. Uh, I think I have one more question. Mm -hmm. See if I can articulate it. Would this help and put you on a path of maybe a more consistent? Um, where you're able to replace a few at a time every so many years. On the There's probably plane. a word for that, but instead of instead of getting all new at once and now all of a sudden Start a few years from now we've got to get all new again. Like yeah. a better rotation. Sometimes with these air packs though, the way they upgrade them is when they do that, you know, not everything works the same with the same fittings. 
So okay. we kind of like to have them all the I same see. with hoses okay. and stuff. And you know, this is going to be another 15 year purchase before we have to do that again. But okay. maybe in the future, that's something we could look at, you know, try to see when they get the one of their latest standards and maybe do a half, you know, right. buy about half of them once and then half at another time. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing the work on that grant too. Thank you. Okay. Any more discussion? Let us vote. Kachini? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Selby? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Item 12. Consider approving the expenditure of funds in the amount of $174,968 to replace all remaining Windows computer within the city departments using state contract vendors for Panasonic SW1020P and HP SW1020HPI to be paid from the Technology Capital Improvement Budget as recommended by the Information Technology Director. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, go ahead. How many how many computers are we talking here? Because seven. Or Windows seven. You mean this is going to yeah for the Windows seven. This is going to replace a hundred desktops. Okay. Um, Seventeen police vehicle, laptop, uh, tablets. Um, nine uh, regular laptops. So this is something that's very much needed. Yes. Okay. I kind of have a similar question that I had for the fire department. Does this help our situation as far as future planning goes in that how far out are we from needing to, are we, I guess what I'm saying is are we maximizing our purchases so that um, for longevity as, as much as possible or are we settling for something that, um, you know, is there something? No, I think this will, this will bring everybody up to speed. Okay. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to go back to our rotation schedule right um, as long as budgets improve for the next years okay uh, to where we're we're not replacing so many all at once okay good when did windows 7 come out i don't remember when it came out but it right. just stopped being supported in january so so okay good deal thank you mm -hmm. okay anybody else let us vote kachini Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Selby? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Item 13, consider approving the expenditure of funds in the amount of $22,328.40, $11,164.20 to be reimbursed by the Stone Mill Homeowners Association to Burr Construction, Oklahoma for drainage improvements in the 2200 block of Waterford Lane using unit bid prices from the 2020 concrete and asphalt paving drainage water and sewer project contract as recommended by the development service director do i have a motion motion accept second any discussion did we get do we have a contract in place as far as the reimbursement do we have a what do we have a contract in place as far as the reimbursement yes we've talked to the uh, homeowners uh, president and uh, what have you they've agreed to reimburse us we've met out there with the residents and told them what we could do to improve the situation and uh, they everybody's agreed to do it and uh, no problem on getting reimbursed all right any other discussion let us vote Selby yes Kachini yes Wooten yes Gilliland yes Yonda yes Item 14, consider approving the expenditures of funds in the amount of $12,524.81 to Brewer Construction, Oklahoma for erosion repair at Freedom Trail Playground Moldy Pond Dam using bid prices from the 2020 Concrete Asphalt Paving Drainage Water and Sewer Project contract as recommended by the Development Services Director. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, let us vote. Yonda? Yes. Selby? Yes. Kachini? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Item 15, consider approving expenditures of fund in the amount of $76,266.64 to Brewer Construction, Oklahoma for drainage ditch improvements along 11th Street using unit bid prices from the 2020 concrete and asphalt paving drainage water and sewer project contract as requested by Councilmember Gelliland. Do I have a motion? 
So move. Second. Any discussion? Do you want to tell us about this? Uh, this is along 11th Street. Um, basically, right around Taylor Park, up to uh, Wagner Road. Really, that whole property. I mean, we're getting close to the floodplain, but that holds water, and we're gonna and and we'd like to help move some of that water off the residents' property down into where it's already going. But this would be a widening of the ditches and replacing of the uh, uh, tin horns along that stretch of road um, to help move <clears throat> more water where it's already trying to go and help with the drainage. And I'm not the expert on the on the project, but that's our goal, as, uh, you know, from from my side of it. Correct. There's a large number of tin horns that have to be replaced, and they're at, they're at odd angles in there where it doesn't kind of inhibits the drainage to occur. Mm -hmm. And it would be widening the ditch and uh, replacing all those tin horns, which is uh, a considerable cost to the project. And it will really enhance the drainage. We've had complaints out here for a number of years, and it's a good project to try to get it done to look better. And uh, I think we'll, we'll improve the drainage. Mm -hmm. to some degree okay anybody else let's vote selby yes kachini yes gillen yes yonda yes wooten yes all right moving on item 16 consider approving accepting the irrevocable standby letter of credit in the amount of forty nine thousand one hundred eighteen dollars and seventy five cents for sewer and water for the commons llc located at Health Center Parkway and Professional Circle as recommended by the Development Services Director. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second, anyone? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Selby? Yes. Wooten? Yes. Caccini? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Gilliland? Yes. Item number 17, consider approving ordinance 1416, an ordinance which provides amendment to the code of ordinances of the city of Yukon, Oklahoma, by amending code section 7497, proclamation and termination of state of emergency, D, and adding sections E and F, and declaring an emergency. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I'm proposing this uh, ordinance, and I'll kind of explain where I'm coming from. So, um, <clears throat> again, I feel like I need to clarify that this actually has nothing to do with the current proclamation, um, except that the current process brought to light some things um, that I'm not sure we all understood at the time. So currently, well, the state of Oklahoma gives mayors the, the authority to declare emergency in their municipalities. And then it's up to the city council to determine whether or how to enforce that. So we currently have an ordinance in place, I believe it's 1408, that um, states a willful disobedience of, a, of an emergency proclamation is, can be fined by up to $700 or three days in jail. Well, <clears throat> that is a standing ordinance regardless of when any new proclamation might be issued, even if it's 20 years down the road. I feel like that should happen in the reverse order. That if we declare, if, if we, if our mayor decides that we need to declare an emergency, we then immediately address it and say, how do we enforce this? How would we immediately address it? With an emergency council meeting. Which would require notification or do we? 24 hours. 24 hours? But so, it may not be possible. That, that's the other side of the story is it's not always possible to meet that quick. Um, what? Um, I, I mean, and I'm op I mean, I'm I'm want to have a discussion about mm -hmm. it. So I'm not, you know, I don't want us to rush. I want us to, because I, I really think it's a very serious authority that we've given our mayor, um, regardless who that might be, right. you know, even if it's 50 years from now. Um, so let me ask you, uh, Miss Yonda, what like what limitations do you perceive would prevent a meeting within? Well, if we had a severe emergency and say, you know, some of us are gone or not able to attend or. I mean, lots of things could happen when you, you know, when you try to condense it into like 24 hours. Judge mm -hmm. Miller, how many would have to be present for an emergency meeting? 
And as we've learned in the last few months that we can use technology for a meeting, such as phone calls or Zoom meetings. So theoretically, we could be scattered across the planet and have, have a meeting. Unless we are in a state of emergency and we've been hit by a tornado and we have no electrical. I mean, I have a generator, but not everybody does. Yeah, so this wouldn't limit the ability of the mayor to declare an emergency. It would, it would reverse the order as to how it's enforced. Mm -hmm rather than having a standing enforcement of any and every proclamation from now and forever, mm -hmm. it provides immediate checks and balances to the proclamation. So Does you that, could, a mayor could still issue proclamation. Right. Does that and, current proclamation that we, I mean, ordinance that we have, it goes from zero mm -hmm. warning to 700. So I think that's a pretty liberal way of finding people, that it's not a $700 fine, but it's warning Sure. to 700 and so I don't know how much broader we could get with that well I mean so this proclamation does I mean this ordinance I'm proposing does three mm -hmm. things it would create a expiration date for an emergency proclamation the one we have now I think has been updated nine times if I'm right and looks nothing like it did in March right so when the council in March voted to enforce it they did not invoke vote to enforce the current proclamation so in my mind an expiration date on emergency proclamation would be appropriate and then the other two pieces of this particular proposal would be that it would enforcement of a of an emergency proclamation would require a new ordinance so you get that by having an emergency council meeting so that's why there's the third piece of having an emergency council meeting as soon as possible um, I just, I feel, I mean, I just truly feel like if it's important enough to bind people, and that's really what, you know, in March, that's what we did. We shut down mm -hmm. most of the cities, you know, all that. If it's important enough to do that, it's important enough to have a council meeting about it, which, which we did in March. Mm -hmm. And that was the appropriate order. Since then, we've done it in reverse order, and, and any time in the future would be in reverse order. We have so, fines that are currently in place, though, that have been in place for years. But but right? but what those fines are enforcing aren't evolving. The emerging proclamation can evolve and change at, with the pen of one person. Mm -hmm. But again, it goes from warning to 700. It could, well, right, but that's, I mean, actually, that's beside the point. The point is we've given the mayor that authority. Right to essentially write a new ordinance with her pen or his right. pen. You know, as far as I know, John, have we issued any citations as far as the proclamation? There is not. We've had contact uh, early on. I think since the last meeting, I told you we had actually had four uh, complaints that were addressed just by notification and giving the businesses a copy of the proclamation as it was at that time, mm -hmm. and that's been the only action we've had to take. Through the years, have you ever seen a fine issued? Uh, no, uh, and it wasn't up until this ordinance language was put in place to cover emergency proclamations that we had a punitive um, balance to the order. Right. So um, we haven't had that in the past, and, and I think Councilman Gilliland asked at the last uh, meeting, don't we have statutes and ordinances that are enforceable? We do, but not all of them are going to cover particular situational things you may have in a proclamation right and without having a punitive guideline to an emergency proclamation you don't have anything so you don't you don't have anything to maybe actually detain arrest fine or anything so I think you have you have to have something that doesn't prohibit the law enforcement officer from only having to find a current statute or ordinance in order to affect control of an emergency situation. That's what, that's what the punitive or the enforcement side sure. gives you. Mm -hmm. So um, let me just mention a couple things. So um, if, uh, if it hasn't had to be enforced or hasn't been enforced, in my mind, isn't actually an argument for having that authority in place um, but also what does a 
what does an emergency proclamation put in place that isn't already in place by law? So right now, you know, in the last few months, it would have been keeping your business closed and then wear masks. Right now, um, keeping business open by wearing right, masks. Right, right, right. Right. So I guess what I'm saying is, what, and this would be, a, you know, I don't know if there's actually an answer to this question. What could happen in 24 hours that would be such a risk to public health that already is not against the law? Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So wearing a mask, I mean, if we feel like that's important, you know, 24 hours without the mask mandate being enforced would not be detrimental to well, you the masses. Feel, you might feel that way, but I think the families who have lost people would not feel that way. Right. Right. But I'm saying to um, to the I'm I'm right. so the question was mm -hmm. what could happen in that 24 hours between the proclamation and an emergency meeting that isn't already against the law that would be detrimental to public health. Any other discussion? Okay, let's vote. Yonda? No. Wooten? Yes. Caccini? No. Gilliland? Yes. Selby? No. Okay, seeing as that did not pass, then we'll strike section 17A, the emergency clause, and go to new business. Councilwoman Yonda? Uh, nothing further this evening. Thank you. Councilman Wooten. Did we skip the new business? Or did we get oh, sorry. Oh, new, new business. New business uh, but yeah. no, we don't have any I new business. Ahead, yeah. We've been here so long. We've been dashing and dotting so much that we're just moving on. I just answered to it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Councilman Wooten. Um, let's see. School starting next week. Kids probably won't be at the school, but the school lights will be flashing. Mm -hmm. So, Chief, can your people... You want to talk on that? We actually uh, we had a meeting today with all of our SROs and school staff, and we will have faculty and some students who are transitioning either from specialized training and teaching. So there will be students on various campuses in town. The lights will be active, and we will be enforcing them. So watch Thank your you. speed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councilman Kitchen. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Yukon Police Department for their quick response uh, for a hit and run event at the Yukon Veterans Museum. Our trailer got hit and the person, our perpetrator took off running, I mean, drove away, but uh, with an eyewitness with the eye, uh, who located the license number before they took off, the Yukon Police Department was able to apprehend and jail that person which saves our insurance company. So I wanna thank the police department for their great work. I also wanna mention that the Yukon Veterans Museum Gala is still on for the 17th of September. We're gonna follow all protocols set by CDC and the city of Yukon. Also, I'd like to say the census, please respond to all the uh, questions and, and, and get your uh, name in on that census because that is funds that come to our city in the future. And be safe in all of you, whatever you do. Thank you. Canadian County is currently number one in census reporting. We're still ahead of Mustang, Vice Mayor uh, Ryder. Councilman Gilliland. Um, a word of gratitude and encouragement to our educators in our state, but especially in our community. Uh, for many of them, it's a new experience, and also for their students and their parents and their families. So I want to encourage them to keep going, keep working hard, and uh, thank you for the service and love you give to our the kids in our community. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Trinity Baptist for what they're bringing to our county, a much needed service, and we are so excited that you're gonna share it with Yukon, Mustang, Oklahoma City, and El Reno, and all the surrounding areas. Um, please remember to wear your mask, be safe, um, help keep our businesses open and our people uh, alive. Also make the most of your tomorrow and be kind to one another. This meeting is adjourned.